We know Terry's a UEFA Pro License holder, the highest coaching badge you can get. He worked as an assistant manager. He's been uh, a leader, clearly. Why can't he get a foothold on the managerial ladder? Uh, I don't know. I like the fact he, he he's dropped his expectations from Prem to Champ to League One. Why not League Two? My biggest complaint about Lampard and Co and all of these guys getting jobs hand gifted to them and the millions that go with them is they didn't deserve them. Rooney, I said last time I was on Talk Sport, with his win percentage, he keeps getting dream jobs. Great agent. So I say these these guys, they drop down, they do their badges, and, and they have to, you know, learn take clubs trade. on and learn their trade. Learn Absolutely, their because trade. there's a million great managers at that level who deserve those Birmingham jobs, that deserve the bigger jobs that Lampard might get another great job or a Derby County. So, look, I, I'd interview him. I would somebody asked me outside, would you give him the job? I said, no, I'd interview him. He doesn't exactly. deserve the job. Based exactly. on what? He's coached. He's done well coaching for Dean Smith. He's followed him around or whatever else. But that doesn't qualify him for the so job. So how, how do you become a manager then? If, you, if, if you're... Well, you come in and how did you become doing what you're doing? You have to do an interview. You know somebody. You get in front of somebody with power and influence. So he would sit in front of me and present. If I liked the, you know, the cut of his jib, I might give him a shot at the title. That's how it works. That's how yeah, interviews work. There's this false equivalency of allowing a top-class footballer to suddenly become a top-class coach. No way. If you look at the most, most, most of the top, top managers, they've all earned their salts. They've all learned their trade. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying he wants. He, he would sure. quite happily go to League right. One. But league I see. Two, I don't recognise. And I, I, I know John Terry. I happen to think. Of, I, I, I rated him as a player. Tried to sign mm -hmm. him in 2002 or 2003, and Ken Bates told me to go for, for multiply um, because he was going straight in the first team. Um, and every time I've met him uh, socially, I think he's a really strong character and a really strong leader, and I think he's one of the best centre-backs that this country's ever produced. Yeah. Um, as far as that translating, it's a very, very different skill set from being a player that's involved in himself and maybe some governance on the pitch to somebody that's able to manage up, manage down, manage mm. sideways, manage across. Um, I would think that John Terry has the ability to translate. I don't recognise the idea. I don't know what kind of idiot owner would suggest to to John Terry in an interview whether it be League 1, League 2 or Championship that he wants his team to play like Manchester City I, I find that as the most ridiculous immature childish comment if I was a, if I was a person sitting in front of a, a chairman yeah. like that I wouldn't want to be in an interview unless like he had that. a translator with him translating yeah and it may well just be that we want to play good football everyone wants to play good yeah. football but the, most, the best football is winning football right? Yeah. And how you get to that point so how do you explain it away? Is it optics? Well, is maybe it because he's going to have a controversial past. Maybe, first and foremost, no. First and no. no, I don't think so. No. Not in the slightest. Because no. I would, if I was back in situ in a football club, in the same way that Darius is yeah. currently in situ, I would give him an interview. I'd give yeah. him an interview. Yeah. I won't give him a job. Yeah. I'd give him an interview. I, I would be worried What's about the point the, if you hang really on, decided Sam. you're not going to give him the job. I'd be worried about because the fact. I'd want to see that he was worthy of being given the job, not give him a job on the back of the fact that his name is John Terry. I tell you They're what, two different things. Somebody who's worth that much money and wealth is based in a certain area of Surrey and whatever else. Travelling across the other side of the country, you manage in League One and League Two the amount of games. Mm. The days you need to be at the training ground, the days you need to be on site. I would be concerned, but I would give them the benefit of the doubt. See, I had this conversation with Sunes about Frank Lampard because mm. Sunes was part of the interview process or part of the selection process for Rangers. For Rangers. Yeah. And he was massively impressed with the fact that Frank Lampard has huge personal wealth, mm. doesn't need the job in any shape or form, mm. but wanted it, wanted the job to be able to lay claim and dispel the myths that he can't manage, right? Now, mm. Sunes were advocated for him, they went for someone else, right? Mm. That's a different discussion. Yeah. But the point is, is that it's... It, <laughs> John Terry and the value of John Terry as a leader on a football field is vastly different from the ability to be able to lead an organisation, to be able to manage a football club, and the, its primary focus being the football team. Now, I don't know why he doesn't get jobs, and the fact that he's gone for a Newcastle job is laughable, mm. right? Because who he in their right... that, though, didn't but he? Who in their right miles off no, 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 he's, yeah. he's miles off the presentation. Sod the presentation, mm. he's miles off the experience. Yeah. The presentation and being able to be able to convince somebody in an interview is one thing. Being able to do the job there and afterwards is a different thing. But I think he can he's make a good manager. Both. I, I do too. I think he I, could be I do too. one of the best of that generation. I do too. But I think he needs to get a, a good club in League One and do the business and go, not go too quickly, but some of them jump too quickly, Paul Ince in the past and other whatever yeah, else, yeah. and go from there. I do think he's got what what the stuff that's made of to Prime be a great manager. Prima facie, I think that our perception of him mm -hmm. is, you know, I don't know, he was in at Villa with Steve Bruce yes. as a coach. Uh, Dean Smith, yeah. Dean yeah. Smith, sorry, yeah. Steve Bruce and picked up, yeah. picked up after Steve Bruce had left Villa. Yeah. Um, I don't know how good a natural leader he is in a different function where he's got mm. to deliver unpopular news. Yeah. Because part of a manager's job is to deliver unpopular news and also to manage people. Manage when up those, and down. Uh, yeah. And I don't know whether John can do that or not. What I do know as a, as a character, I think he's a standout character. Yeah. I know he's a good coach. Yeah. I've talked to people he's coached yeah. in Villa. I know he's a good coach. So and there was a rumour about him going to Saudi. 
the argument, his mm-hmm. conversation, I think it's, a, again, I keep using the expression force equivalency, but it's the right one to use in this context. It's ridiculous for John to be in an interview at Newcastle. Yeah. He's nowhere near the level of experience or understanding to manage a football club that was going in a certain direction yeah. with Saudi ownership. His agent's got a favour there. Yeah. So with, with, you know, it's also the challenge of going down to League One is that you've seen this with players, pragmatic people like Teddy Sheridan, not always my favourite person, but a pragmatic individual in terms of the way he looks at the world. But you've got a Teddy Sheridan managing at a League One where players can't do what he did as a player. Mm. And you saw this accusation. I remember Ian Wright telling me a story about the England players finding it difficult to, to play under Glenn Hoddle because they, they were asked to do certain things in training that he could do naturally because of yeah. his ability. And he was frustrated that they couldn't do 40 yard, 40 yard diagonal volleys to one another. But that's part of the job. You've got but, to be able to. Yes, but, but that makes you that. a good manager. Now, yeah. going down to League One and manage, managing at a level of functionality at international level is vastly different to managing at League One level where you've got players that are very technically away from where you were. Mm-hmm. And it's it's about the ability to be able to communicate that and the generosity of spirit to be able to want to do it. The difficulty for these players is that if you are John Terry or if you are Teddy Sheridan, it becomes about you rather mm-hmm. than the football club. And so then the football club's got a challenge in its own mind about yeah. who's who, who's more in focus here, the manager or the club itself. Yeah. But that can help you as well, can't it, as a football club? If yes you've got no. someone who... You're on TV a couple of times yeah. or whatever. You don't that really can help get, you in terms of money. You don't get much difference now to TV money, the way the deal's done, unless it's a cup uh, situation. Would it help you get better players? Would it help you have a relationship with Villa, Leicester, Chelsea, potentially, if you want Premier League youngsters on loan? It depends. I have seen Gus Poyer back in the day uh, come in and manage in League One. Yep. and turn a team into Barcelona overnight, and we which he did De- with a very De- average Brighton and we team. we saw Dennis go to Leeds, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, Dennis went to Leeds, yeah, absolutely. So, look, I, I admire the fact he's put it out there, and I think that's why he's done this on the podcast. He's basically telling everyone now, I will take an interview at League One clubs. Because I don't I'd think like, he's been I'd out like, there with that. I'd like to see him do it. Yeah, I'd like to see John Terry in that space. Yep. I'd like to see John Terry cutting his teeth in a managerial role, because my, my hunch is that I think he could be successful in it. If I were Bradford, I would ask John Terry for an interview. Mm. Who the size of that club? Yeah, it's absolutely big huge, club, big it? personality. Now let's see. Now you can test John Terry and his travel. That's a hell of a long way from uh, Cobham, sorry. From Cobham, yeah. Yeah, so that'd be interesting. Nice part of the world, though, isn't it? You know, you get yeah. up there and then you get no, I'm just saying, distance wise, you've got a young family. You know, how committed are you? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.